Okay, I have the mandrel back in, and I'm going to put the, this cap on there, the hot cap on there, and turn that. And uh, I want to slide that on there, but I don't want it to go all up. Oops. Uh, I dropped the call it. Hit my heat stop so I don't. I don't like reaching across everything without e stop not pushed. Anyway, I'm going to put some high pressure lube in here. Stainless has got a bad deal that it smears really easy. And then if it smears and galls up, you're not going to get it off, off of there. And I don't want that to happen, so I'm putting some high pressure lube in there. I just put some high pressure lube in here and smoothed it around. And we'll see if we can get this on here. It's going to be snug. Ugh. Ugh. She's snug, but it, right, oops, <clears throat> got pressure in it from the seal. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my drill chuck out. I'm going to put my live center in. Put my live center in. I want to make sure I get got enough stroke to get to where I want to go. So we'll just put the tool bit in there just for eyeballing it. So right about there somewhere. I want to try to keep this as short as I can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a bushing or something to put my center up against. I I'd like to have something like an inch in diameter or so. Um, or a big nut. A big nut would work. As long as the point ain't poking me on, it's not. So we'll just tap that up there. And then we're going to crank that in until she's gooten tight. And we're gonna see if we can get some some cutting done here or not. What's that? What that's doing is it's pinching it to the end of that mandrel. So oh, I got my top for my pressure lube. So we take that tool bit out. We don't want that. We gotta turn this down and up to the shoulder. And uh, what we're shooting for is a wall thickness of. Uh, probably about 25 thou. So, got a ways to go. And I want to get the right tool bit for this. That one's chipped. I can quick sharpen it or find another one. Here we go. This one. This one should work. All right, so, and we're going to leave a 250 shoulder out there, 250 or so, 200. After all, it's whatever I want it to be, I guess. <laughs> I'll go back and correct my drawing if I change it on the fly. There we go. So we all know the overall is is two inches, right? Yep, two inches. And what I was shooting for, I believe, was 250. Let me check my drawing and see. Uh, yep, I was sh I'm sh gonna sh I was shooting for 250. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and touch. 
and zero and zero this and I'm going to back out and then I'm going to here one inch seven hundred and fifty there's one inch five six seven fifty Start it right there. I'm just gonna put a bar in there. I just put a witness bar in there. I don't know what RPM I'm gonna be running at yet. I'm running it right now at 800. I might be a little fast. Yeah, I know it's a little fast. I'm going to go down to uh, 600. And we'll take a 40 cal cut and see if it goes. You can't see it too aggressive with doing it this way. You gotta take your time. If you get too aggressive, it'll slip. You don't want it to slip. It may slip anyway. That's why I got the high pressure lube in there. videos of uh, one of the guys that did a lathe just like mine put blood cooling on it. it did a pretty, good, pretty nice job of it. I think I might have bookmarked it so that I can go back to it. Any of the pliers don't pull stainless chips out of the way with your fingers. I'm telling you, they, you may get away with it for a while, but sooner or later it's going to bite you. <laughs> I know I learned the hard way myself. I ended up getting bit. Ah, so the outside I want to go for is uh, one inch six twenty five. That wouldn't be right, would it? Uh, it's the H500, and I wanted, uh, oh, I actually was going to leave that at about 50 thou wall thickness. I don't know, that might be a little thick. All my other engines that I've done have been thinner than that. I don't know why I came up with that. Well, must have been a reason why I came up with 50 thou, so I think that's what I'm going to shoot for then. So. Uh, 50 thou wall thick, this would be 100 thou over the, so it would be 1 inch 600. This is what I want to shoot for. Like I say, I don't, this, this, I put together this design, oh man, a long time ago. I, and what I did was I, I used, uh, some other designs as a little bit of a reference for for things, but the majority of it is what I just kind of slapped together in in uh, Unigraphics way back when I was just learning Unigraphics. I was just learning how to uh, to model up stuff. Now I'm just about ready to stop at work. Anyway, I won't be stopping at home. I'll still find a way to model stuff up at home too. I'm gonna go 40 cal. So 
this is going to be 40 thou, 40 thou, 40 thou, 40 thou, so I don't know if you guys really want to watch that or not, so quick as this cut's done, I'm going to uh, shut the camera off, and then I'll come back when I get down to the finish. Plus I have to remember to, to uh, turn the, the two inch diameter down to uh, 10 thou under just like the, the other cylinder we just finished. So anyway I'm going to turn the camera off here and I'm going to continue taking 40 thou at a time until I get down to uh, my one inch 600 dimension that I want to hold. So we'll be back. Okay the diameter is is finished. I ended up with uh, 1 inch 600 so it's uh, 50 thou wall thicknesses that I have on the cylinder. I want to uh, clean this up now to uh, uh, 1 inch 987 is what the other flange has turned out to be. This should be at 2 inches. Actually, it's a little over two inches and uh, two oh three, two inches and three thou. So, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to take a light cut. I'm going to take one, two, three, four, six thou. I'll cut. We're going to see what we're at here. Okay. We're at uh, 75, uh, 95. I'm going to double check this cylinder again just to make sure that that's what I was shooting for on this flange. 75. Actually not. I'm glad I checked. I'm actually shooting for 8 thou under. 92. Ninety-two is what I'm shooting for. Didn't go beyond that, did I already? I don't have to set that cylinder back up. Nope. One, two. I need to take three thou. Two, three. That's, that's okay, it seals against this other surface. This is just a lot to hold the alignment between the two, actually three pieces. I was going to put dowel pins, little tiny dowel pins in there, but then I seen another engine that was built on a similar fashion, so that's what I went with. Matter of fact, I think my Sterling fan is built that way too, on that fashion.
One inch, nine ninety-two. I don't know if yeah, you, it's not going to focus on it. But believe me, it's there. Now I want to uh, chamfer all the little corners. I'm just going to use the uh, same tool I used the other day. Back this out. And I'm going to kick the RPM down to uh, 360. And we're just going to just going to put a chamfer on all three of the corners. Just break the edge, the sharp edge. The end one, I'm going to put a little bit bigger chamfer on it. Okay. That's good. Now we can take it out of there. Hopefully, get it off of the Uh, what did I do here? Oh, I hit the wrong button. Don't know how to operate my own camera, I guess. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take that out of there and see if we can get it, get that off of the, off of the mandrel now. Hopefully, it'll come right off. be a little tight. It is a little bit warm, but it ain't it's not real hot, it's just warm. Hit the e-stop button. The excitement. Uh, I may have to take and uh, uh, see how did I attempt that. Loosen that up. Loosen this up and use the weight of the of the mandrel, brass mandrel itself. Yes. I think it came loose. I thought it moved. Just using it, this the weight as it's like a slide hammer. Come on now. Let's take it out of there. Take it over to the bench and see what I can do. It's a little snug. It did move a little. Not much. Hmm. I don't want to mess up my jaws either. That shouldn't really hurt the jaws. It's a nice straight bag on it. Move this out of the way a little bit. I've I've done it this way before, and it's always worked for me. This time it's not though. No. I think it's sliding back and forth. Right now. Yeah, it's loose. I just turned it. Oh boy. That's not a good sign when it does that. Turned it a little bit and it stopped. 
usually means it's galling up in there. Um, I hate to do that, but I'm thinking I'm going to put a screwdriver in there and see if I can just get a little bit of leverage. I didn't want to mark that surface up. I didn't want to mark that face up on here. I suppose it's got a vacuum in there because the pressure leaked out. That's what's going on. Yeah, sure enough. It's sucking it back every time. <laughs> That's why when I was wrapping it, it's, it was coming out and then going back in. So, it's just a vacuum. Yeah, it just popped back. <laughs> I got a massive amount of vacuum in there. Come on. <laughs> yeah, buggered. Carefully slide that in. He did leave a little bit of room for a screwdriver to get in there. Ah, boy, she sealed up <laughs> tight with that. Maybe that wasn't such a good thing to put in there. That uh, high pressure lube. I know, drill a hole in the end. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, oh, it just went back on. Buggered. Buggered. You buggered, you. screwdrivers <laughs> every time I move it it pops back on I don't know if you guys are seeing that but it's uh it's got a vacuum build up in the end in the end here that's why she's not coming off come on stay out there ways in there maybe. Give me a little more room. Boop, 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 boop. I don't think I've ever had one seal up that good. <laughs> Pretty tight seal on there. Dirty, dirty, rotten, whatever. Hmm. Very interesting development here. <laughs> Not one that I like. Um, how else can I break that seal? You know what I should have done when before I put that on there was grind a, a slot. Note to self, grind a slot in there on mandrels like that when I do that. If I'd have ground a slot on that, it wouldn't have had that problem. So... I do have this little bit of a tool here. Maybe I can. Oh no. Ah. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> Always something, let me tell you. Uh, not sure what to use. If any of you guys know of a good way of doing this, let me know, because I sure don't. Ouch. 
Mm. I'm losing ground. Okay, I got. That's the furthest I've gotten it so far. Hoofda. I got the e stop pushed in case you. In case anybody out there is going, hey, you got the truck key in there. I've been told never, and it's and it's true, never leave a chuck key in the in the chuck. Bad, bad things can happen. Um, let's turn this around to the top so it won't drop out this time, and see if I can't get a block here. Just a piece of scrap steel block here. And because that is a. Oh boy. Now I'll get something bigger in there. I got a bigger tool bit here. Could go a little bit more in there. How much? I can't believe how much pressure there is in on that. It's a substantial amount. Need a block that's just a little bit bigger than this now. Well, if I left it sit there like that, eventually that uh, vacuum would, you would think, would start to release. It would be sucking air in. You would think, anyway. Oh boy, now my now the mandrels. I don't have the tight enough in the chuck. <laughs> Raza Fraza. Rick Merle. But I could well I can't. I was gonna say turn it around and somehow clamp onto it and pull it out, but yeah, it won't work. Yeah, this all slid all the way back on, I believe. I've lost everything that I gained right there. Mm. Nope. I need, need 14 hands. That's the problem. I think it's actually getting easier though, so it must be sucking air in there. Stay now. Stay right there. Carefully. Well, can't move it in. All right. <laughs> Guys are getting bored probably watching me struggle here. Or laughing. <laughs> One or the other. Must be getting close to the end of it. It doesn't want to. dare move it or if it's going to snap back. Oh, <laughs> wow, that was a struggle getting that off of there. <laughs> she, she was she was one heck of a vacuum in there. <laughs> but there it is for what it's worth. I, I didn't mark it up. I got a little bit of a line there but there is a gasket material that goes there. Let's go over to the surface plate. <laughs> So, this fits on here, and there's a, there'll be a mating part that goes on here with a diameter where this is going to slip into, and this is going to slip into, and then the bolts are going to pull it tight, and there'll be a gasket material in there, and that's going to sit like that. You know, I could have made this, uh, the walls thinner. And then it would have took less time to heat up. But Ben's, you know, what I should have did was made this two and a quarter inches long, left heavy material out in the end, like I did with my Stirl like the Sterling fans are built like that, like I did on my Sterling fans, because then you heat that up, it'll hold the heat longer, 
when you take the flame away it'll continue to run because you have heated up this block on the end. Right now the end of this is uh, I've got it at a hundred thou thick and this is at 50 so we'll see if it works if it works if it doesn't work like I want and and it uh, takes too long to heat up or something I can always go back and and uh, put it back on the mandrel and turn some more off of this and I can also uh, I could actually weld a piece of uh, stainless on the end of this and I may end up doing that and changing my design and have a, a chunk out on the end to heat up. We'll see, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Got a long ways to go before we get to that point. So, But anyway, there's two parts done and these are now these two this is actually completed all the way and so and so is the the hot cap just so they are they are done I mean the stuff that I left light or a bit large and and turned down so it's so we're on our way I don't know what the next part will be um, oh I, I I was was looking at uh, the there's a plate that goes, this is going to get mounted on a plate with a with a, the hole through for the displacer. I, I don't know if I want to do more lathe work tomorrow or not. I just could finish the, the whole weekend out doing lathe work. Because I could take, take and go ahead and do the displacer. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll work on probably the displacer tomorrow. And then after I get the displacer done, because uh, that now that's going to be some thin wall stuff I uh, want to get that as thin as I can Pro that I'll try to get like 25 thou thick on the wall um, get, get the I don't know if I have any tubing around that size I have some tubing I have some tubing here but I think it's not Let's see I'd want clearance on the sides probably 30 thou 60 I'm not sure what I had on my design but um, yeah by the time I turn this down the wall thickness is going to get down to well this would be close I might I might try to use this although this is I'd like to use aluminum or, or something light this is steel seamless steel tubing I don't have any aluminum tubing that size so I'd have to go from uh, bar stock to do that uh, I'll have to decide that anyway I'm gonna be done for today so and I'll probably uh, I'll probably uh, put this video into the video editor and, uh, and uh, render it and do whatever I want to do to it. And uh, I have yesterday's video uploading of cutting the cutting the uh, the cylinder here. I'm not exactly sure what they call that. It's uh, it's the displacer cylinder because that's what happens. I mean, basically, what happens is the air heats up, the displacer goes in into the inside and pushes the hot air away from, pushes pushes all the air away from the hot tube back to here, and then it cools down, and uh, so the air shrinks and pulls the piston the other way, and and uh, the power piston. Which slides the hot air display or the displacer back over here again. The air heats back up, and you have that cycle. I, there's a name for that cycle. I can't remember what it is. <laughs> there's a name for the volume in there too. Which I took, a, like I say, I, the volume that I used on this uh, 
engine, I swiped off of another another engine. I, I, that's what I started with. I started with that and kind of worked around that, and then I I took other ideas from from other engines. So it's kind of a mishmash of uh, different engines all put together. So, but anyway, enough rambling. Uh, I'm gonna go in and see where uh, the video is up that, that I'm uploading and uh, probably dump this into the computer and and start the rendering process and oh, I should take some pictures I need to take pictures because uh, uh, people on one of the boards don't like my videos so try to appease them I am taking pictures of uh, my parts as I do them. And I'm not very good at taking pictures. <laughs> I'm too shaky, I think, is, is what the problem is. I have to put it in a, I have to put it in a little uh, tripod in order to uh, be able to do it. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Ah. Because, like I say, it gets there all blurry pictures are blurry and they're just they don't work very well I'm not uh, if it ain't on a tripod and uh, and set up it's just not gonna work for me my hands are too shaky that comes with age I guess I don't know so I'm gonna set this up and try to take a pit, couple pictures to uh, I don't know how to set this uh, I wanted something to prop it up. I guess like that'll work. So we'll get that. Change it to camera mode. Oops. To camera mode, and we'll take a picture. I'll take a couple of them, and then I'm going to take and put this over here. Put this. On top, turn it back up and get the whole thing. Like I say, uh, I find this a hassle. Where the camera, video camera, is a piece of cake. It's easy, just set the camera up and let it go, and yak away. <laughs> Some of you probably get tired of my yakking, but all right, we'll take a couple shots like that. All right, I'm going to call that good. So, until next time, I think I'm going to call it quits for today. I got some cleaning up to do. I started to clean up the lathe. I, I cleaned those that stainless those stainless chips off and and uh, clean the ways and stuff and make sure that there's no coolant sitting on them and and then re oil everything and. And uh, that way she's ready to go. If I if I work on a displacer, that'll be out of aluminum or maybe that's steel tubing. I don't know yet. I'll have to decide. Um, more than likely, it'll be out of aluminum because I don't like the idea of the extra weight on a displacer. So anyway, until then, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys later.